today with one of our most interesting Arizona <laughs> drag racing legends, Danny Van. Uh, Danny Van is uh, from the days of Beeline into the Firebird, was crewed on several cars, is a member of the uh, world famous Chandler gang. Uh, always there with a smile, always there, always there. Great, great personality, uh, a, per, a person larger than life. And we haven't seen Danny for a few years, so it would be a nice time to talk about his passion for drag racing and, and get, get, get caught up with him. Danny, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's our pleasure. So, you, you still a car guy? You still love cars? Still love cars. Always love cars. Uh, what was your, when did you, where, where are you from? Where were you born? We're born in, right here in Mesa, believe it or not. I'm in Arizona, born and raised. A, a, a native. Native Arizona. That a boy. The, uh, what's the, uh, what was your first recollection, that recognition or memory of knowing that you love cars? Just being around. I mean, just, it was, it was tough. My brother always said it was kind of a hot rod car and just following around with him and just, they took off from there. You know, and just starting to get to know people from him. And that was my love of, the, of, the, of, of cars. What'd your brother have? What was his car? He had a, he had a 65 El Camino. He had a couple of Nomad wagons. So I was around him quite a bit and tinkering in the cars, or on the cars in the backyard and whatnot. So it just kind of escalated from there. So he was your first car hero? He was my car guy. And he got you going on the... Yeah, and then we, back in those days, it was Jimmy and Johnny West had the old shop downtown. So my brother ran around with those guys, same age. So we all hung out around, you know. So your brother was outside. a real old guy then? He was, no, he's, yeah. he's an older guy. So yeah, he hung out with those guys quite a bit. So then, that you, 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 as the kid brother, you, you hung around. Tried to as much as I could. <laughs> so, what, did, have you had any hot rods in your life? I've just had a few cars. I, I bought the El Camino from him, as a matter of fact. I had a '61 Impala that I thought was a hot rod. The El Camino wasn't bad. Darren and I had a good time driving that thing, big block four-speed car. Uh, so that was that was a lot of fun back that, in the day. That was healthy. It was. What was? Uh, what was your first recollection? When, when did you, your first trip to a drag strip? Beeline Dragways. But when was that? I was at the 70s. I went with Mike Finley, Barnes, so, Dossie. Who did you go with? I went with, I, went, I went with Mike. He said, w working on a race car. But I had a friend of mine, before I got into working on the race cars with him, that we used to go spectate all the time. Okay, so but your first impression, your first time sitting, get, getting there. What, oh, I wanted to go again. And then again and again, and then things just escalated. So it got to the point to where I was able to get behind the scenes and get a chance to work on a race car, which who, was fun. Who was your uh, early hero, and who did you like to root for? I liked Don Perdon, believe it or not. That was my guy. Yeah? That was my favorite. Still, still is. Guy. Still yeah. is today, yeah. That was yeah. my favorite, favorite, favorite drag racer. Well, a drag racer, but he's, he also likes to do the off-road racing and anything fast. He's, up, he's still up plays the game and he's, he's in it. He, he likes ATCing and right. I mean, he's, he's living life well, really well. Yeah, I didn't know that, but yeah, he was my favorite guy. Yeah, that's uh, he's I, a very I, interesting person. I always like watching him and Bob Rant work on the cars back then where Snake would just back off to the car and put his hands on his hips and look at that thing and didn't think he'd go out and run a number, you know? It was magical. The dynamic duo. Exactly. So you you went to a few races, you fell in love with it. How, how did you, you know, you met Philly and the gang, Mike Philly and the gang, right. your brother? To my brother. And the first time you realize you're going to go to the races and work on their car, it was it was it was magical. <laughs> it was a fun thing, you know, because we got a chance. To, I was starting to go to the shop, the family shop where the car was. I helped them guys build that trailer that we had that weighed a million pounds. I worked with that thing and got a chance to know a lot of people. I was always Skeet's brother. I didn't have an identity for a long time. I was Skeet's little brother for long for me forever. That's fine. That's you everybody. Still are. I guess I am, but <laughs> well, that's everybody that introduced me though. This, this is Skeeter's brother. Skeeter's brother took a long time before I got my name. But yeah, yeah, polishing on the race car, you know, just doing things, just learning things about it. It was all brand new. So I mean, got a chance to be hang out with Rick, Dossie, and Barry, and Finley, and Barnes, and all them guys. It was a blast. Well, she'd have been at school at that time, but <laughs> it was a lot of times I kind of missed school to go to the drag races. Well, it's important. It's important. You're being graded on. It. Yeah, it was, as a matter of fact, and it was fun. The, the first time out, you know, tell me about the, what car was it? And... Well, the first time with me, with Mike, with the Cotton King Dragster, I was a reverser back then before they had reversals in cars, pushing the cars back. 
and just being a part of it and just being on the crew, you know, just that was a that was pretty neat having friends that were at the racetrack, seeing you behind the scenes working on the race cars. It it made a big deal. Made you feel good. Oh yeah, it was great. The uh, that's a, that's kind of when I remember meeting you in, in those days. You uh, you always were just always happy to see everybody. Oh yeah. It, it was really obvious you liked what, you know what you were doing. Right. The uh, what what tracks I, with with that group? Where did you end up traveling to? Well, Johnny, now we locally. I mean, it was local Tucson Beeline back in the day with Mike. But as things progressed, I got a chance to go take a trip back to Indy with Johnny. Johnny West. No, yeah. Johnny and Jimmy, Tannis, myself, and Barry took a trip back to Indy in '78. You know, which that was the furthest I've been racing, and that was brand new for me because those guys took me places that I don't think I would have had the opportunity to travel to, and things to do. So it was brand new and it was pretty neat. So what was your impression of the, the U.S. Nationals? I loved it. It was the greatest thing. I mean, that was the top of the, the top of the line, which it still is, as we all know. And to be part of it and to be there, it was it was it was very fun. it was a lot of fun. A long race though. Long it, it was a long week. Yep. Yeah, but it was it was a crazy time for me. I mean, 1978 in that part of the country was it was still it was it was still pretty pretty segregated there still. <clears throat> but I didn't do anything to those people, so they were going to get along with me whether they wanted to or not. And you know, that was the end of the story. So, but that's, it was, yeah, that's, you know, uh, that was it. I mean, I never bothered anybody back there. I never hurt those people. Okay. But there were times we were there in the mornings to go to record the restaurant, to eat breakfast. They wouldn't serve me. Right? It's 1978, have you? So we, we, Barry came up with an idea. Barry goes, what do you want? I told him what I wanted. He goes, okay, just wait right here. <laughs> so when breakfast, is, breakfast came to the table, Barry would come to the door and go, come on in. You know? Oh. And I sit down and we eat breakfast together. But they would, I mean, it was just one of those crazy things, getting along with people back that, in that part of the country at that time was, it was interesting, but like I said, I never bothered those people, so. You, you saw it more back there than oh, you did, did here. Oh, gosh, yeah, in there, yeah. In oh, this is, I mean, this is, my, this is my place. Right. I mean, I know everybody around here. I've been here forever. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, you know, I always think the people that didn't want to meet you were there. Exactly. They lost out. I never had a problem with anybody yeah. here. I never yeah. have. I still don't. No, that's uh. That's something when people, we, you know, in 1978, we kind of thought. Yeah, it was great. I thought it was over. Yeah. You know, I was fresh out of high school, and that was my first trip, big trip to go anyplace. And it was all new. It was like, what the hell is going on? I didn't understand it. That's crazy. Because I never lived there. I never, you know, we didn't have that here. I got along with everybody. Well, absolutely. I mean, I don't so. think anybody ever thought about you other than somebody's enthusiastic. You could exactly. do the job. Well, and yeah. Just you so. all love the same thing. That's all that mattered. Exactly. That's one thing about drag racing, though, in general, has been more inclusive than just about any other form of racing. Right. With, you know, you know, in respect to race and gender, and, you know, there's, it's, anybody can do it. Never had a problem. Yeah, that's, that's what I love about drag racing, and, and uh, made a lot of fun. The, uh, right. So you, you've been, been to Indy, of course you went, I remember, think, remember seeing you at Ontario. Right, went uh, to Ontario. With, and you probably yeah. went to Orange County a couple times. Oh, several times. You know, more than once as a spectator, as as a crew guy with Johnny working on his car, you know, with him. Johnny, Frank Baker, myself, and Darren, we all, I mean, we just, good times. Those guys took me places, like I said, I never would have had a chance to, to go to, I'm sure. Yeah, well. And picked up and met a lot of super nice people. Learned a lot. Learned a lot. And I still enjoy it. What what do you, uh, what do you miss most about that, those days? Just, I mean, the people just being out there having a chance to just to go and just see what's going on all the new stuff that's happening right now it's just it's unreal trying to keep up i just miss it all in general i mean i took a little hiatus there for a while in my life but i'm back and uh missed a lot but eh, i wish i could go back and go more go to more races but well you know you you things can. are coming up you never know what it's coming up never, never know what the future i brings. will but I'm back. Don't give up your passion for it. No, not at all. I love it. You know the uh, yeah you you kind of fell off the radar. Right. And you went through some stuff and mm -hmm. you got back on the horse and you bet. you've been uh, do, doing really really well. What do you right. what do you attribute your your bringing yourself back to the good side? Well, it just it had to happen. It was I was at a point in my life is like man you got to stop this this lifestyle sucks. This is not, this is no good. You know I got in some trouble, and that's what. I, knew, I had a starting date to change things in my life, but I could, it never was on the calendar. And I got in some trouble, with, and Sheriff Joe helped me out. 
he gave me a starting date to change all these things. And from that point on, 2005, I got sober, and here I am. And you, you, you appreciate every day since? Every day since. It's, it's a whole new ball game. Everything's totally different. The people that I've known for all these years, I mean, everybody knew I had a problem, but nobody would ever confront me with it because of who I am and the, the love they have for me, my friends. But they knew. I'm sure everybody talked. But that's fine. But no one ever called me out of my name. No one ever treated me different. But they knew I was different for some reason. I wasn't the same. Someone was going inside. Yeah, yeah. but I always had friends. I've always, I will, I mean, I have a lot of friends. You, you do. And that's, that, you know, when you, when you kind of that respect me. on Facebook for a while, and I got to, you know, get, you know, oh, right. get caught up with you. And right. it felt like, you know, the ni nice thing about good friendships is that you know, on a timeline, they don't, they don't start and stop. They're right. continuous. Always. And, and you could pick up and talk to somebody you hadn't talked to in years, and it's like the time, like time. Take right off, yeah, and go right again. Off. You know, people are happy to see me back. I'm happy I'm back. And like I said, everyone knew, but it's just one of those things. You know, it's like everybody kind of shaking their head, but still, yeah. Well, you. You know, it's just what it was. It's We're blessed that, you know, it's a blessing that you you were able to overcome all that exactly and you know you've been working hard i know that you uh that you uh your your mom passed away recently uh she's meant a lot to you sure well, uh, of course you're good good family man tell me about the rest of your family well i got a daughter that's in her 30s and so i can tell exactly how old she is but i got a grandson that's three years old that i love to death and it just it just changed a whole lot of things about my life uh, I mean, when I went into a rehab program, I left. I just, I didn't tell anybody I was going. I just left. I didn't tell my daughter. She was looking for me. <laughs> it was like, what? Anybody, you seen dad? Called my mom's house looking for me. I just had to go. I couldn't tell anybody where I was going. You had to do it on your own terms. I had to get it done. And I got it done. So. Well, con congratulations. Much better now. It's a whole new world. What, what is the future? What do you see in the future? Uh, right now, my thing is, just to live life, man. You know, I can't go back. I can't catch up. I can't go back to where I was and try to come forward and, and make things different. All I can do is just go forward and make things better. You know, in your life, you, 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 uh, one of my favorite things about being involved with the racing and always going out to, in the B line in the early days was, oh, yeah. was the, was really the Chandler guys. Right. You guys were so much fun. Uh, you love what you're doing. Uh, you're just a big, just as big a part of it as, it's the rest of them. Um, you know, we we lost we lost Mike Finley and Barry Norman. Barry Norman, yeah. And uh, but those guys meant a lot to all of us. Sure. And and how do, how do you best remember them? Oh, Finley, our times of going to Pomona. I mean, there was times I didn't have money to go. He paid my way, he took care of me. Barry took care of me, took me places, did things with me. Like I said, I never would have the opportunity to do. Uh, we go to come on Saturday morning early, come back Sunday night, party, you know, you know, you know the thing, drink beers and do what we do, and go dancing. And Finley was always fun to go to the club with. We had dinner, casting cleavers, we'd go have a big steak dinner, and then go to the bar, and, and Finley was just a riot. I mean, he, he loved dancing. He was a dancer. <laughs> I mean, the wax on, wax off thing, you know, it was, it was great. And Tannis and Finley were dancing. She just loved dancing with him. He was probably embarrassed more than anything else because he just, he, was, he got in the dancing zone and he was, it was Mike Finley all by himself on the dance floor. The way it should be though, if you, and that's, you were into that's, it, doesn't matter what He was think. into it, that was, that was the yeah. greatest thing. But uh, as far as Barry goes, Barry was just, he was nice to me, he was good to me, and he was a good friend. I, I remember going with those guys to, during one of the uh, Ontario trips, going to a place in San Bernardino, I think it was called, or Colton called the Branding Iron or something like that. Okay. And with those guys, I thought I was going to get my butt kicked. <laughs> you know, yeah, they, they what rolled in, and I, you know, I sat there the whole time with kind of like my sitting right. on my hands, trying to say, "Don't say anything, don't look around." And uh, those guys didn't care; they had the best time. They were oh, yeah. really funny. Always fun. Yeah, it was a, definitely like the do drop in. You know, it was the little... always a funny thing. But Barry would always it was like everybody else. I still get it yet today. People still call me by my first and last name. And we were talking one time, and. It's, Barry went to introduce me to somebody. He was like, this is Danny Van. 
but what's your last name? Uh. <laughs> and, and I go, yeah, that is my last name. He goes, what? Danny Van, no, what, your last name. And this went on for five, ten minutes, and I finally just gave up. It's like, yeah, that's it. Danny Van. Danny Van. And that's still yet today. Everybody addresses me as Danny Van, first and last name. And I don't know, I don't know why. You, though. It's it's me. It's you. I mean, it, it, it's like, it's like <laughs> entertainers like they, get, they have their persona like you right. know, Cher or Bono. You're Danny Van. That's me. And I've always been just that, Danny Van. <laughs> well, Still yet today, and it's not ever going to change. I, I believe the, the 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 Lord had good plans for you when He put you on the face of the earth. And I, I like to think so. What, what you've been through is, can inspire others. Sure. Uh, the fact that uh, your passion for drag racing is still there. And uh, <clears throat> anybody listening and watching this, uh, he's still available to be a crewman. And yeah, so, right, you know, right. If you're looking for the, an able-bodied guy <laughs> that can pick up the whole car pick by up himself. cars back. But speaking of able-bodied, just a quick story about Rick Dossie back in the day when he was driving the Cotton King car. V-Line Dragway, pushing the car back all the time. And there was sometimes it was harder to push back than others. And I'm like, damn, Rick, were you holding the brake? What are you doing? He goes, no, nah, I was just warming up the clutch. You know? <laughs> that was always doing, just warming up the clutch. You go, thanks, you know? That's too but funny. But yeah, it was, yeah, that was our deal. And, and Andy, same thing. We, we, got a, we got a reverser at that time, so it was much better. Yeah, that, that was, that was, that, everybody hated the fact that they had a reverser, but they exactly. did it. Yeah, and it's all starting. Yeah, exactly right. It made a big deal, yeah. Yeah, is the brake on? Yeah, the brake's on. Yeah, there's no doubt. The, the, the Ricky's brake. always warming up the clutch. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, just but still, like I said, my Darren, Debbie, I've known them guys back since Christ was a corporal. You know, we go back a long ways, and we're they they knew I had a problem back then, but being the friends, the Dozels are good people. Being friends, they knew, and it was all right. It worked out. And yeah, anything that you, know, you if you could do it, you would right now. I would probably, I would probably go back to India again if I could. I'd probably go to the Gator Nationals if I could. Have you never been there? Never been to Gators. I'd probably build another race car, a hot rod, street car, I should say, not a race car, a street car, if I could do that today. What would be your dream car? I'd like to have another Impala, actually. Would be a fun car to have. But then, you know, that's just one of the cars I'd like to have yet today. A lot of cars. Yeah, a lot of cars. I'd like to have a four-speed Impala like I had back in the day. The clutch guy. Oh, yeah. No doubt. And the El Camino was fun too. You know, we just, we was, Darren and I would take turns driving my car to see who we could make the shortest patch between shifts, you know. <laughs> First, second, third. It was just, we spent an entire night one time just, just doing that same thing wherever we could go. Where did, like, you, where did you go to do that? We did it in front of everybody's house that we could possibly find. <laughs> All of our friends knew somebody was out in front of the house either that night or the next morning because that's all we did the whole evening. It left your marks in the street. Left our marks in the street. I mean, that's back when you can get away with those kind of things, and we did. You sound like a bunch of hoodlums. We were. We were. We were the 60 series hoodlums, that's is what we okay. were. <laughs> Life was a lot better back then. Life was better. I, I, take that, I would take those problems over the problems we have today. I would, too. Any time. I would, too, because it was a blast. Yeah. And I'll never forget it. Um, it's, uh, it's so good to get, get caught up with you. Uh, the, uh, we hope to see you at some races coming you up. You will. I guarantee it. Yeah, well, you know, don't don't be a stranger. You know, you're Danny Van. That's me. You know, we need to uh, get you out and knock the dust off you, and that's and me. Take you to a couple races here and there. Yeah, I'd like to turn some tools again. It'd be kind of fun. Turn a few wrenches in there if I could. Yeah, that would yeah. be a blast. I think uh, I think there's some people out there who would be uh, glad to have you come along. If not anything, you know, we can tell that you uh, you're still uh, a puny little guy, and right. you know you're not you're 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 not very strong. So no, not at you all. Tell me that you go, you go to the gym every day. <laughs> that out. I do. That I do. And that's your that's, that's your my peace that's my of thing. Mind. That's my peace of mind. My stress reliever at the end of the day. Well, it's hard to believe you're 94 years old. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, black don't crack. Yeah. Well, you said that, yeah. and I'm jealous of that. Trust me. Yeah. I, I wish I had that same affliction. <laughs> uh, you're, you're a great man, Danny. And it's, it's so wonderful to have you here and get caught up with you. And uh, there's a lot of people out there that love you and probably miss seeing you and wonder right. you know, or whatever happened to you. Right. And uh, you are a legend. You're an Arizona drag racing legend. And, well, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate you having you here today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.